some of your precious time that you could have spent uh, somewhere else. Uh, we have purpose in, in, in bringing everybody together uh, here today, the 26th of July. Can anybody remember what historical day this is? Sure, nobody. In actual fact, it's not. <laughs> Dennis Goldberg will speak more about Sentinel mm -hmm. experience. I, I know that you know uh, Dennis. It's, uh, the, the people involved in Sentinel experience is myself, Rudy, uh, Sado, Timaria, Dennis, and, and Timothy. And, and, and uh, I'm not sure whether Fiki is, has arrived or is somewhere around. But these are the people that's involved with Sentinel experience, and you'll know everything about Sentinel experience. Um, in, in a moment, Sentinel experience taken from the Sentinel Mountain and to come here it is quite an experience because you want to come back. Some of them that come for the first time, second time, they actually come back to buy property in this area. But they also, you know, Hout Bay being uh, the, the micros of Africa uh, in a sense, you know, they, they have that experience as well. And, and so on. And so, you know, without taking any more time, I would like to introduce, this is Dennis Goldberg. <clears throat> he is the chairperson of Sentinel Experience. I know that you all know Dennis, so he doesn't need a long introduction. You know everything about Dennis. So over to you, Dennis. Thanks, John. I was asked to be chairman of Sentinel Experience by those who've been involved setting it up. And the feeling was there needs to be a kind of concerted cultural experience for Hout Bay. Um, I got asked to be chairman and we've talked quite a lot about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And we got kind of stuck on the idea that we have to have our own building so that we can really be big and build an empire. More recently, we've begun to understand that culture is about people doing things. You don't have to have a centre, although we would like to have a cultural centre for everybody in Half Bay. Nevertheless, let me tell you what the concept is. At the heart of South Africa's coat of arms are the Khoisan people. The slogan, we are people through people, or we are people together, is in the language of the Khoi people. I can't say it properly. But the Khoisan people are represented through a large part of the population of the Western Cape and a large part of the population of the Eastern Cape. So the click in the language was taken from the Khoi people. And so really, and in, throughout the Nguni languages, so really the Khoi people are the origin of us. Plus, of course, there are new communities that added were added through settlement. Um, we live in a very divided South Africa. We call ourselves the Sentinel Experience Khoisan Memorial and Multicultural Project. Um, because we don't live in olden times, we live in modern times. And we need to be inclusive. Let me give you an example of some thinking. Uh, we have what used to be called the Coon Carnival. And to make a joke, we now drink champagne, so it's the Cape Minstrel. <laughs> um, but that is a genuine expression of part of the community of Cape Town of the Western Cape. But it perpetuates the divisions of our society. It doesn't unify. It's good for people to have their identity. We need something more. And if we take Hart Bay, we don't only have the Hanberg, we have Imizama Yetu, we have the valley, we have Corsa speaking people, we have people from all over Africa now. We have what we still call the colored people and its divisions. We have people who were settlers, but new settlers, Germans, Italians, Greeks, and others. Why don't we think of us as a multicultural community 
and set about shaping our sentinel experience for all our people to build the unity we need to build. If I may quote a 90-year-old man, Nelson Mandela, when he went to KwaZulu-Natal at the height of the civil war there, towards the end of the apartheid days, he said, we are a land of many cultures, we have to become one nation. Throw your weapons in the sea. We in Cape Town, and Cape Town's 80% of the Western Cape province, are terribly ethnically divided. We need to build some mm. unity. Uh, for me, culture <coughs> is wonderful, it's exciting. You can have a look at my home inside and outside here. I feel enriched by it and want others to be. But it's also part of our daily lives. And you might say, well, there's Dennis going off into politics again. <laughs> um, I make no apology for it. Because our lives are governed by our politics and everything we do is political, whether we like to say it or not. The politics I'm interested in are the politics of Hart Bay to build unity so we can make a better life and respect each other's dignity through each other's culture. We're launching it tonight. The idea was to bring people from Hart Bay and uh, we have Yaki Bredenkamp who's Mr. Big Man in the Zika National Museums, am I right? Uh, <laughs> the director? CEO. CEO. Sorry if I didn't get the title right. Um, no, I mean that one must show respect. Um, to be director to CEO of such a, an outfit, he was telling us now inside, other than the Smithsonian Institute in the United States, this is the biggest national museum conglomerate in the world. None of us knew that, I certainly didn't. And it's nice to know that. It's nice to buy, buy into South African uh, good stuff. We're a civilized people, after all, damn it. And um, <laughs> we want a part of that for Hart Bay. We know that there are jazz groups, brass bands, the, the clocks, the minstrels, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Music school, where's Dwin? Teaches music here in the schools. We have all sorts of talents. We would like to make a platform for everybody to bring people together. We don't want to take anybody over. We'll do that later and Cape Town will become the cultural capital of South Africa and the world. <laughs> but that's for the future. Uh, what I'm saying is let's not think too small but let's not think greedily of control. Uh -huh. We want to build together. For instance, there will be a festival September the 25th to October the what? 27th October. Called the Hart Bay Festival, starting with a fancy American do just to show who controls the world <laughs> with their big cars <laughs> and foods. We'll do things we're hoping through schools, uh, cultural projects, and the following weekend having a seafood festival. And it, that takes us back to the Khoisan people, who are the first seafood eaters, the lobster, the crayfish, mm -hmm. and the fish. And we want to celebrate that in the context of our modern South Africa. That's what we're about. We're hoping Maybe we will add some South African films, short films, long films, but genuine South African stuff. There's no film facility in Hart Bay. Uh, we would like to do that, if not on a regular basis, then for periods during each year, we would like to be able to mount uh, photographic exhibitions. You'll see a photograph by George Hallett hanging on my wall there. It's of two guys swaying a zorro. <laughs> Maybe we should use that as our anti-drugs campaign. <laughs> but he is an internationally recognized photographer. Mm. He comes from Hart Bay. 
he was financed by one of, one of the rich people in Hout Bay to go through high school. He's lived abroad and told me on the phone the other day, he discovered who he was only when he left South Africa mm -hmm. and met people without being hemmed in by all the racism mm -hmm. and the humiliations of South Africa. Well, he's a role model for the kids in Hout Bay. He's agreed that he will give us an exhibition. He's still got the negatives of his youthful f photographic times. Um, so that leads into perhaps kids becoming photographers and having a photographic competition. We don't mind if other people do it as well, but these are ideas we're playing with. So there's lots to do. We have flora and fauna. We have geology, we've got a magnificent road that's always closed. <laughs> Especially when it rains. A chap can speak drive, I'm talking about. Uh, as an engineer, I'm very proud of it. I'm sorry that messed it up. They should have asked me. Um, um, the essential point, colleagues, friends, is to draw people together do what you're doing, we will try and work with you and be inclusive. If you want to perform where we're doing a festival, tell us. Bring people together. And there's such talent in this community, as there is in every community. It needs expression, it needs respect, it needs dignity. And I've said it all, and I can say it again, we're hoping that it will create some few jobs we're hoping it will add to the attraction of Hart Bay as a tourist centre, already popular as it is. We reckon there are many possibilities. Thanks for coming. Drink up, eat up. There's some great food here. Um, there's paella for those who don't like to eat meat. There's chicken biryani. There is also what have you done? A couscous, uh, couscous Deirdre? Vegetarian. A vegetarian dish as well. We try to cater for everybody <laughs> out of respect and not to say, no, not a meat eater. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know about vegetarians. They eat vegetarian to be healthy. And in my experience, most of them have drippy noses. <laughs> <laughs> that may be why they're vegetarian, not that they know because they are. You know, so forgive me for being obscure being naughty, but thanks very much for coming. And some of my colleagues are here, Jonty introduced them by name. Uh, we've invited Chantal Mita to join our committee. She's agreed she will strengthen us imme immensely. Thanks, Chantal. Rudy is the administrative chief. You'll get the documents too. You, we want to see your identity card. So <laughs> Thanks everybody and Thank welcome you. to my home. <laughs>